Welcome home. Hey family, as you know, we have moved to level four lockdown. But Celebration Church Johannesburg, we might have closed the building, but the church is still open. Yes, we are meeting on our social media platforms on YouTube. You can find us as well on Facebook, where we are meeting every Sunday from 9 to 10 in the morning. Put a comment. If there is a nugget that has encouraged you, please feel free to throw it in there or greet somebody and say, hey family, good morning. Welcome to church. Please share all our material that we have on our Facebook page. Like, because you do not know in whose hands that is going to end up. You could save somebody from suicide. You could minister to somebody who is on the brink uh, of a divorce. You never know what that message could do. We are spreading the word of God through the social media platform. We continue to do this, building people, building dreams, and building the kingdom of God. Watch us online from wherever you are in the world as we bask in the glory of God. Put your worries outside the door. Let them fill you with the Holy Ghost and everything that is not of you. This is what I want us to do. I'm tired of believers who come to church with the needs and leave church with their needs unmet. Because we have not created a platform where people can bring their prayer requests and we can pray. We as a congregation are going to stand and agree in prayer. I know many times we say, oh, send your prayer request. We don't even know whether somebody is praying or not. But we are going to pray publicly. When God answers, not if, when God answers the prayers, we want you to write back and say, you, we, you prayed for this and this is what has happened. Our God is in the process of healing people and doing miracles.
No one No one can No one will Who can stand against the king No one can No one will Oh
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace and for your favor. We thank you that we are able to come before your throne of grace. Father, we just want to thank you for your word that you have in store for us. Father, that even as we pierce the darkness, Lord, as the church we are rising up, Father, in the name of Jesus, the time for us is now for us to make a difference. Father, in the name of Jesus, a difference in our lives, a difference in our churches, in our families. Father, even in the nation of South Africa. Father, we thank you that you are raising a mighty army. Father, people that are committed to the things of God. Lord, we thank you for you have given us this mandate, oh God, to come, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, so that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, oh God, for a mighty army, for a battalion com committed to the things of God. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and we give you honor. Amen and amen. And all the saints said, amen. We thank you, Lord, this morning and welcome to church uh, family. We are excited to be in this place and choir and band. Wow, what amazing praise and worship. We just want to give glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, my task is very easy because before me, mighty women of God has come have come and shared the word uh, according to our um, theme for this month, which is piercing the darkness. And we remember Pastor Prisca in the uh, precious in the first week, she said, we pierce the darkness through staying in his presence. And then Pastor Nyasha came in and said, the gift of understanding is the doorway to piercing the darkness. And wow, Pastor Judith then came in and she says, as we pierce the darkness, we can only do that through bold prayers. Hallelujah. So, yes, devil move over. We are coming across that line. And we know we are in charge. You cannot defeat us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you could open your Bibles anywhere and we will meet somewhere, as Doc would say it. Hallelujah. So if you open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles 29, verse, uh, we'll read from verse 1 going onwards. I'll be speaking. Uh, just selecting a few uh, passages of scripture, uh, but from uh, true 
Chronicles chapter 29. As I was going through the Bible reading, one of the things that came to me, that God spoke to me, is when I looked at the lives of each and every king who came to rule Israel. You know, they ruled in different ways and forms. And we know leadership styles differ from person to person. But what should have remained consistent is that they should have just obeyed God. But going through the kings of Israel, you'll find that there were some kings that brought pain even to God himself. There were some kings who brought pain to the people. You know, it's just so amazing. As um, I remember, many years ago, I heard Maurice Rulo say something very profound. He said, all truth is parallel. Whatever happens in the natural also happens in the spiritual. So as I was going through um, the book of Chronicles, I saw that whatever was happening in the natural was also happening in the spiritual. And the same applies to when you see chaos outside, it's just a reflection of what is happening also in the spiritual. But God forbid that our generation will be found wanting as far as God um, uh, mandate upon us is concerned. So coming back to 2 Chronicles 29 verse 1 to 4, it says Hezekiah became king when he was 25 years old and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did right in the sight of the Lord in accordance with everything that David, his father, had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the lodge which his father had closed and repaired them and replaced the gold overlay he brought in the priests and the levites and gathered them into the square of uh, square on the east uh, we continue on um Verse 5 to 7, then he said to them, Levites, listen to me. Now consecrate, uh, consecrate, dedicate yourself and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and get the filth of idol worship out of the holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful and they have done evil in the sight of the Lord our God. And they have abandoned him and have turned their faces away from the dwelling place of the Lord. And they have turned their backs towards him. They've also closed the doors of the temple porch and put out the lamps. And they've not burned incense or no offered uh, burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Let's continue on verse 11, then 17 and 19. My sons, do not be negligent and careless now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to attend to his service, and to be his ministers and burn incense. Now they began the consecration. For eight days they consecrated the house of the Lord, and on the sixteenth day of the month, they finished. Then they went inside to King Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed the ent entire house or the temple of the Lord, the altar of burnt offering with all of its utensils, and the table of show, uh, showbread with all its utensils. Moreover, we have prepared and consecrated all the utensils which King Ahaz had discarded during his reign in his unfaithfulness, and behold, they are in front of the altar of the Lord. Verse 25 to 28. The priest slaughtered them, in other words, the seven bulls, the seven rams, seven lambs, and even male goats for a sin offering for the kingdom, the sanctuary, and Judah. And then they cleansed the altar from sin with their blood to atone for all Israel, because the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering be made for all Israel. Hezekiah stationed Levites um, in the house of the Lord with symbols, with harps, and with lyres, in accordance with the command of David his ancestor, and God the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet, for the command was from the Lord through his prophets. The Levites stood with the musical instrument of David, and the um, and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah gave the order to offer the burnt offering on the altar. And when 
the band offering began, the song of the Lord also began with the trumpets, accompanied by the instruments of David, king of Israel. The entire congregation worshipped, the singers also sang, and the trumpets sounded. All this continued until the band offering was finished. We move on to, we are still on 2 Chronicles 29. We move on to 29, 31, and then 34 to 36. When the band offerings were completed, the king and all who were present with him bowed down and worshipped God. Also King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to exclaim praises to the Lord with the words of David, um, and of Asa the Seer. And they exclaimed praises uh, with joy and bowed down and worshipped. Then Hezekiah said, Now ye have consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Approach and bring sacrifices and thank offerings unto the house of the Lord. And the assembly brought in sacrifices that and thank offerings. And all those who were willing brought burnt offerings. But there were too few um, priests and they were unable to skin all the, burning, uh, the burnt offerings. So until the other priests had consecrated themselves, their brothers, the Levites, helped them helped them until the work was done. For the Levites were more upright in heart and more conscientious than the priests in consecrating themselves. There were also many burnt offerings with the fat of the peace offerings and with the drink offerings for the burnt offerings. So the service of the house of the Lord was established again. Hallelujah. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of what God had prepared for the people, for the thing came about suddenly. We thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Hallelujah. So if you are going to give any title to this uh, message today, it is Piercing the Darkness Through Reformation. Hallelujah. You know, a celebration, we are reformers. So this really spoke to me, you know, we see that when the sin is introduced, what we need to realize is that um, the dismal spiritual situation in Judah under the wicked king as Hezekiah's father provides a background, a backdrop to, to this particular chapter. Ah has introduced idol worship alongside the worship of God. He closed the doors of the temple and established centers of idol worship in every city. But we also then hear, apart from us, who was evil and who did wrong in the sight of God, there was also Hezekiah's mother, Abijah, who was the godly influence that made Hezekiah do right in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we can see that even though the father's heart had been turned away from God, the mother stood, hallelujah, she did what was right. She had a godly influence on the child. Hallelujah. So we also see that revival often begins in times of moral decay. God always uses somebody somewhere to kindle such an awakening. A person with a clean spirit who, who is indwelt by God's spirit. What made Hezekiah stand out was his in intensity and his agency. We see that as soon as he got into power, he did not waste time. Hallelujah. We understand that within the first month, he began to work on what God wanted concerning the house of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sought the Lord with all his heart, his soul, and his strength, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. So, what did he do when he came onto the scene? Hezekiah saw that the house of God was not in order. Hallelujah. He understood that he was a reformer. The calling of God upon his life was that of a reformer. So he stood up, Hezekiah stood up, opened the doors of the house of the Lord, which his father had closed. Can I pose a question to us as the, um, the current generation? Is it possible that we are closing the doors 
to the father's house? Is it possible that we are shutting our children out so that they will not know God? God forbid that we in our generation will be counted as those that did not know God, who shut the doors of the house of God. I pray that each and every father will rise up and open every door that needs to be opened so that the house of God will have open doors once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do fathers close the doors in any way? How can the next generation rise up and do what God has called them to do? You know, sin, iniquity, idolatry, disobed and disobedience closes the doors. Hallelujah. So it is up to us as the current generation to make sure that the doors of the house of God are continually open. Hallelujah. Every time you sin, know that the doors are being shut. And when our children see a sin or see this generation sinning, their hearts will be hardened. So my prayer is that we rise up even in our generation, to cause the next generation to do what, has, what is right. We thank God for his grace of the life of Hezekiah. Was Hezekiah came into the scene and then opened the door. Hallelujah. The burden of every generation is to put order in the house of God. There, is, there are times when you can see that we are moving so far away from the will of God. There are times when the church becomes irrele irrelevant because of the way we do life, because of the way we do things. And that shuts the doors of the sanctuary. So every generation has a burden. This current generation, which is our generation, has a burden to make sure that the doors of the tabernacle remain open. So that when the next generation rises, they rise with the fear of God. So that the doors of the house of God remain open. Hallelujah. A generation that knows their God does exploits for their God. Hezekiah rose up and saved God. Just like what we see Daniel, Joseph, Esther and the rest they did. Hallelujah. They did a good job because they were reformers. They saw that there was need to put to order. Hallelujah. Today we talk about them as the heroes of faith because they dared to do what God had called them to do. My challenge to each one of us is, do we dare to do what God has called us to do? Are the doors to the tabernacle still open or they are closing slowly? As this generation forsakes their God. So how do we open or repair the doors of the temple? If we look at Matthew 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. We need to consecrate ourselves. We need to dedicate ourselves to God. So the first thing that we do, do for us to be able to open doors of the house of God is seek first the kingdom of God. So consecration, I just need to define that, is to make holy or to dedicate to a higher purpose. Something that is consecrated is dedicated to God and thus becomes sacred. To concentrate, to concentrate yourself is to answer God's call to spiritual consecration. This means making a conscious, willing decision to de dedicate your soul, mind, heart, and body to God. This decision must be one of will, intelligence, and affection. King Hezekiah directed the people, and they were devoted to restore God's house to its former glory. The first thing that needs to happen is that we get the things out of our lives that don't belong there. So that we, as the spiritual temple of God, through Jesus Christ, might be a fit dwelling place that he can use. For God to use us for his purpose, we need to consecrate ourselves. We need to come before God to dedicate to dedicate ourselves to him. Hallelujah. And secondly, we need to commit ourselves to God. Hallelujah. 
Committing ourselves to God means that even when we come into the house of God, it's not just gathering on a Sunday to run through an entertainment program. We gather to meet with the Lord himself, to come nearer to him. So our worship, our celebration should be both joyful and relevant in his presence. Psalm 37 says, verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. Hallelujah. So we need to commit ourselves. We need to make sure that we have committed ourselves and dedicated ourselves uh, to God. Hallelujah. The third thing that we need to do to open the doors of the house of God is to get the filth out. You know, what pains me is that at times you come into the assembly of believers, but some of the things that are done there, they have nothing to do with God. We become entertainers. We become anything and everything. And I remember there was a time when the church was even becoming more and more secular. Instead of us leading the way, we were drifting back into the world, having more of the world in the house of God. So we need to get the filth out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see that in 2 Chronicles 29 verse 5, we see when Hezekiah said to them, Levites, listen to me. Now consecrate or dedicate yourselves and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and get the filth out of the holy place. What filth have we allowed to enter the house of God? What filth have we allowed to take over in the house of God or in our lives? When we reject God, when we pursue our own agendas, it is just filthy before God. Stop any form of idol worship. You know, the church becomes compromised when we allow the world to de dictate how we should do church. Hallelujah. How we should worship God. You know, the world can dictate to us, but it is up to us as this generation to say we are reformers. We are rising up and we want the house of God to get rid of this, uh, of this filth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David even says, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is the uh, sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. Hallelujah. You know, time spent at God's house was better for David and more valuable than time spent elsewhere. Can we say that of us in this generation? Can the next generation say, I would rather be a doorkeeper to the house of God? Hallelujah. So we need to take the filth out. Hallelujah. In Philippians 3 verse 8, Paul declares, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and come them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. What is it that you need to count as rubbish so that you gain Christ? Hallelujah. And one other thing that we need to take action on is putting back the lamp. Hallelujah. Our anger scripture for piercing the darkness is Isaiah 60. From verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Let your light shine brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. So we need our light to continue to shine. Yes, there is gross darkness everywhere. And if we are not careful, we'll become more and more wicked in the ways we do life, in the ways we do things. But as long as we arise and let our light shine, it means the lamp of God will be back. The light will continue to shine. You know, once the light shines, darkness 
cannot hold its peace. Hallelujah. 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 So the next thing that needed to be done or that we need to do are priestly and Levitical uh, duties. So these involve total surrender and commitment. We see that the house of God was in, in disarray. God raised Hezekiah and he was a committed person. And not only did he raise Hezekiah, he also had committed people, hallelujah, around him. So we see that there was a rise of a godly generation in putting the house of God in order. In our generation, can we say there was a rise of a godly generation that was in Johannesburg to put in order the house of God, hallelujah. So we see that the burning of the essence for people sins was to be a perpetual burning. In other words, this had to continue to happen as long as the church doors were open. Hallelujah. So as long as we allow God to work in our lives, the burning of essence should continue. Hallelujah. But this had been abandoned. This neglect is similar to closing the churches of our day. Hallelujah. So it has even become so easy. You see, with this pandemic going all around, it's easy. One of the easiest target to shut is the church. They will say, no, you can go to restaurants, it's okay. As long as you have 50 people in a restaurant, it's still fine. But we can't have 50 people in church. The church doors, the doors to the sanctuary are being shut in our faces, in our generation. But I pray that as reformers, we will still rise up and say enough is enough. We need the doors to still be open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we cannot allow the world to dictate how we should operate as children of God. I thank God for technology. So imagine if we didn't have this technology and we were told you can't open church doors, what would have become of us? But God made a provision. So that's why we can still come into homes preaching the gospel so that the church doors, the doors to the house of God remain open. Hallelujah. So when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The hardening of hearts also means shutting the doors of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see that there were sacrifices that needed to be done because God was angry. He was angered by what the people had done. So the sacrifices needed to be done. And these sacrifices were to set all of Israel back into right standing with the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see the three kinds of sacrifices that were offered. There was a sin offering that was pictured for cleansing. Hallelujah. We know without the um, shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So the sin offering had to be given. Then there was a burnt offering that was pictured for consecration. Hallelujah. It was offered, it was offered up totally to the Lord. And the worshippers did not have to eat any of it. And this represents the surrender and holiness demanded of those who have received God's forgiveness. So these burnt offerings were there to keep people consecrated, holy, dedicated to God. Hallelujah. You know, one thing that really hurts is when you look, for example, I can give an example. When we look at times, somebody spends the night in a bar. And the next morning, they are in church. And they are doing praise and worship. And we are saying, how does this work? When we allow such things to happen in the house of God, we are closing the doors. Hallelujah. We close the doors by the things that we do. And each and every individual must have personal conviction to say, you know what, I cannot be in the bar at night and first thing in the morning I have the mic and I'm worshiping God. That does not work. We need to consecrate ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see that as all this and the next offering was uh, the thanks offering, which was 
pictured for devotions. These were voluntary uh, offerings, expressing love and gratitude for God's many blessings. So the priests did all these three offerings to make sure that the doors to the house of God would be opened once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the next thing that needed to happen was the restoration of temple worship and prayer. Hallelujah. I will not touch on prayer because Pastor Judith has already touched on that. You know, Isaiah 43 verse 21, he says, The people whom I formed for myself will declare my praise. And John 4, 23 to, 20 says, uh, to 24 says, But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshippers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Our worship of God either affirms or contradicts our mission our message about God. Unbelievers will draw lasting conclusions about the veracity and uniqueness of God based on what they see or do not see happening in our weekly church services or in the way we live our lives. Matt Red Redman says, in the end, worship can never be a performance or something you are pretending or putting on. It's it's got to be an overflow of your heart. Worship is about getting personal with God, drawing closer to God. We should offer up our spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving and devote ourselves and all we have as sacrifices acceptable to the Father only through the Redeemer. Hallelujah. So when we look at worship, we have to also understand as we pierce the, um, uh, the darkness, as reformers, what kind of worship does God want? God wants worship that is based on atonement for sins. We must not cling to our sin or ignore our guilt when we come to God in worship. We must not try to make up for all this with music and loud singing and talented performances and experiences of happiness and feelings of excitement. So it has to be when we come before God knowing that, yes, I have sinned and I'm guilty for each and every sin. And when we come to that realization, we then come before God and repent before him. Hallelujah. And when we repent, we say true worship that God is looking for. It is practiced through dedication of life. So we commit our lives. God doesn't look for us to simply sing songs in a worship service and then go out into the world and live our lives anyhow we want. Hallelujah. He wants true worship that recognizes that the blood of Jesus has bought our lives for a prize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this true worship is based on atonement, which, records, which recognizes that uh, such worship is practical in the context of a wholehearted uh, dedication of ourselves to our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. It is like those great lines from the hymn, when I survey, survey the uh, wondrous cross, where the, whole, where the whole realm of nature mine, that way a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, demands my life, and also demands my all. Hallelujah. And this worship has to be expressed with thanksgiving and joy. For that joy to be there, it should, and as it should, and for it to be a joy that lasts, it's vital that things happen in the right order of events, with one thing properly build, being built upon another. We see that at the end of the day, in um, True Chronicles 20, uh, 29, verse 25 to 28, we see that they had quite a celebration with cymbals, harps, lyres, trumpets, and singing because God had heard them and they had been cleansed and they were ready now to re bring restoration to the house of God. Hallelujah. So when we talk of reformation, I know some people will say, okay, what is reformation? 
reformation. Reformation is an act or a process of improving something or someone by removing faults or problems, or it is a change for the better. So as we are reformers, it means whatever we do, we remove all the faults. We have to have a lot of soul searching and say, okay, what is it that I need to remove from my life? What is it as a church or as a congregation do we need to remove from our lives? We need to remove all that so that the doors of God, for us to be able to hear even the voice of God, it's when the doors are open. Hallelujah. The doors of our hearts, the doors of our ears, the doors of our spirits, they need to be open. Because many a times there are things that will close those doors. So we really need to be actively looking at the things that we always need to get out. That's why repentance is always important. When you see that you have sinned, you go before God and say, Father, I have repented. I have sinned. So then you repent. You commit yourself. You dedicate yourself. Then when you have done that, you are able to give of yourself wholeheartedly. You are also able to worship him because you know that you are forgiven. Hallelujah. When we lift holy hands before God in worship, we can do that because we know we are our sins are forgiven. Fast forward, come after the resurrection of Christ. Every person has access to God through Christ. Hallelujah. That's why we say he is alive. He is alive in our lives today because we accepted him as our personal saviors. As our personal savior. Once he comes into our hearts, the doors to our hearts, to our lives is open. Hallelujah. And then God has free reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see that reformation or revival is also correct. Terrorized by a return to holiness. We need to come back to holiness. Hallelujah. 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 He will clean out every filthiness that is in us. He will clean out all our faults. We go before him. We humble ourselves. We come before God. Father, we have sinned. We have allowed the church to become more and more of the world. I have allowed certain things to come into my life that should never have come into my life. I have opened doors to the devil's workings, but now I want to open my life to the king of kings. So it is our responsibility as children of God, just as Hezekiah was the one who was sent in that generation. He rose and he called the house of Israel into order. And the doors of the church, the doors of the house of God were open once again. And when that happened, there was jubilation in the camp. The people could rejoice once again. Every altar that his father had raised in that season, it was, they were broken down. Hallelujah. They were brought down because Hezekiah knew that he was a reformer. There was need for a change in the house of God. There is need need for a change, for the better, for the best that God has in store for us. So it is my desire that we see ourselves rising up as this generation so that when we pass the baton to the next generation, they will be able to run with godly ideas, godly things, and a godly mandate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see that the church was birthed in power. Let's refire and reignite that which God has put in our hearts. We need to remain zealous for the house of God. We need to remain zealous for the things of God. Let the zeal of the Lord consume this generation, even the generation to come. We know God really loves us and he has called us for such a time as this. You know, at times things are so hard, but we will continue to look to God. David says, even when I'm overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He had to come before God. He had to give his life. He had to give of himself because he knew he needed God. There's no other time we needed God more than we do now. So uh, my desire and my prayer is that as Christians, as the children of God, we'll rise up once again and we'll look up to the Father and say, Father, we have sinned before you. There are things that we have allowed to come into the house of God, closing you out. We have come into the house of God, closed the doors and 
God outside. But we are saying we want the doors of our hearts. We want the doors of our marriages. We want the doors doors of whatever pertains to our lives to be open once again. We want the doors to remain open because we know God is at work. Our lives matter before God. There is need for us to open up again. There is need for us to open to God again. There is need for us to consecrate ourselves once again. There is need for us to come before God, to restore holiness. As reformers, we need to be holy. We need to throw out all the filthiness. We need to take out anything that has been limiting God from working within us. Hallelujah. 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 So we see that the kind of worship God wants is based on an at atonement for sin. So there is substitution. Instead of us grabbing the horns of uh, bulls and gods and whatever they were uh, uh, sacrificing then, Jesus died for us. Hallelujah. 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 He died for us so that our sins may be forgiven. And this kind of worship that God wants is practical is through dedication of life. When we commit our lives, once I give my life to God, I do not have to look back. I just have to go forward. Hallelujah. But you may find yourself, you have shifted from where God has called you. It's never too late. You can always come back to the floor, to the floor and you can always come to, back to God. God is still alive today. Hallelujah. And we see that kind of worship is also expressed with thanksgiving and joy. We see how Hezekiah and the whole of Israel, they had to lift up their hands. They had to worship. And what really excited me is not that only the congregation worshipped God. It says King Hezekiah worshipped God. They bowed before God and they worshipped him because they knew although Hezekiah was a king himself he acknowledged that there was a king of kings. He had to bow down to God. Hallelujah. So the call is still on us. You may have a certain position in life but that does not make you above God. So you need to bow down. Humble yourself before God and he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to be renewed in our spirit. We need to give God all that we have. We need to dedicate and commit our lives and our bodies to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So reformation is here to stay. Hallelujah. We need to reform every nation. We need to reform every individual that we come through uh, across. So it is important as Christians to make sure that our lives continue to speak of the reformation of Christ to say, you know what, your life can always be changed. If we are to pierce this darkness, we need to rise up, make sure that the house of God is in order. That's how we can restore the house of God. When the doors are open once again, when the overlay within the house of God, every instrument, every part of my body is committed to serving God. My mind, my emotions, my spirit, I give it to God. I say, take this, oh God, and use it for your glory. So as you live your life, always be aware and cognizant of the fact that God wants you as you are and he can cleanse you and after cleaning you, he will use you for his glory. So it is time for us to rise up. Hezekiah rose up in his generation. He was set to do the things of God. He came in and do a mighty work. We see the restoration that took place. It was for easy for Israel and um, for the children of God to remain focused on God. Because remember, we were created to praise him. If we cannot come to a place of worshiping him who created us, then we have failed as Christians. My desire and my prayer is each one of us will give of themselves. You may find yourself, you have allowed certain things to come into your marriage. You have allowed certain things to come into your family. You have allowed certain things that do not please God to come into your life. But this is a time for you to bring that reformation 
nation, starting with self. We see that the priests had to cleanse themselves. We see that the priests had to consecrate and dedicate themselves before even getting into the house of God. After that, they then were able to come into the house of God and offer sacrifices. So it is indeed possible, even in our day. As long as we receive Jesus Christ as our personal savior, you will come and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we are able to stand before God boldly, come to his throne of grace and worship him because you will have done so much for us. We thank him because we know we are no longer strangers, but we are joined as together with Christ because Christ has redeemed us from the case of the law. You cannot remain cursed forever. Christ has died for every sin. So doors to your heart, doors to your mind, doors to your spirit can open once again because Jesus is alive. Allow him to come into your life today and accept him as your personal savior because this is our season for reformation. This is our season to make a change, to do a turnaround as we are able now to worship God once we receive Christ Jesus. And if you are there, you have heard this word. You see Hezekiah who was born by a father who did what was wicked, but God was gracious over his life and he was able to minister to people, to, to have Levites minister to people so that people were cleansed and made whole. A call is being made to you that you accept the Lord Jesus as your personal savior so that you will be able to stand before God not ashamed, but knowing that he hears every prayer, you can always go before him and speak to your father as your own father. So I will ask you, wherever you are, to raise up your hand. You can actually inbox us. You know, if you are watching on Facebook, you can inbox. If you are in your home, wherever you are watching, just make sure they are, the details are being put on the screen. Just get hold of us. We want to help you to have this life that we are talking about so that we ch is a shift in how we do the things of God. As God allows us through his spirit to, to be able to become the children of God. So if you have raised up your hand, I just want you to say, Dear Lord, I come to you today. I thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. Because you loved the world so much, you gave your only begotten son, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal today, Savior today. And I say, forgive me of my sins. Come and wash me and cleanse me and make me a child of God. Father, I thank you for I am forgiven through Christ. Thank you for accepting me as your child. I receive the forgiveness of sin. Thank you, Father. I am saved today. And I commit my life to bring you glory. I dedicate my life to you, O oh God. You can use me in any way you want to bring the glory of God on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Once you have done that, know God has heard your prayer and he loves you. And church, be encouraged. We are reformers. We are not allowing anything wicked to come into the house of God. Every wicked thing is being taken out as we continue to commit ourselves, as we continue to worship him, as we continue to dedicate ourselves, as we continue to do the will of God. May God bless you and may you continue to make you shine in everything that you do. Indeed, arise, shine, for your light has come. And I want you to know that as reformers, we are piercing the darkness because darkness can never stay where the light of God shines brighter and brighter. Amen and amen. What a word by Pastor Audrey piercing the darkness through reformation. Well, look, why don't you just throw an emoji 
right now in the chat and say to Pastor Audrey, thank you so much for the word. Thank you so much for the word. In fact, Pastor Audrey has just closed out a four-week series that we have been running on piercing the darkness, starting all the way with Pastor Precious, Pastor Nyasha, Pastor Judy the week before, and today, of course, with Pastor Audrey. We are so excited and want to thank our lady pastors for leading us and guiding us into the word so powerfully. Now, as we round off our service today, I just want to quickly take a few moments to uh, just guide you uh, as we receive our offering. You know, as Pastor Audrey was teaching us today, particularly from the subject and the scriptures on Hezekiah, it really uh, struck me when, you know, she read, of course, as we were reading uh, Second Chronicles chapter 2, especially verse 29, and it struck me as I read from verse number 31, where it actually says, as part of Hezekiah, the Bible, the heading in my Bible actually says, Hezekiah restores worship in the temple. I mean, one of the things that Hezekiah did was he was restoring worship in the temple was to ask people to bring sacrifices, right? Now, the sacrifices that were dubbed in so many words, there were sin offerings, there were peace offerings, and, 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 and Pastor Audrey really touched on this. And I want to go on um, verse 31 where Hezekiah actually says, Then Hezekiah said, You have now consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Come near. And he says to the people, bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the house of the Lord. And the Bible records that, you know, people bought so many sacrifices and so many offerings. And the Bible says, and they brought these with a willing heart. They brought the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. Now, this was all a process of restoring worship in the house of God. You know, it's quite amazing because every time, and again, when worship is spoken about in the word of God, it is spoken about in the concept of offering. Now, in fact, in the book of Genesis, when uh, Abraham first um, uh, 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 took his son Isaac to the mountain to sacrifice him, it is at that moment, at that point, that the word worship was first used. If you remember, he actually says to his servants, why don't you wait here, then I and the boy go yonder to worship, saying he is going yonder up into the mountain with his son to offer him as a sacrifice, but he dubbed that as a form of worship. You know, I believe that our offering and our giving is more than is, is nothing more but a form of worship. In fact, I would actually want to say that the highest form of worship that we could ever bring into the house of God is when we make an offering to our God. You know, offering is just by itself an act of worship. So I want to encourage you today to say, as you do everything else, as you worship God, the epitome of your worship is seen in your offering. So as we give today, we have to give not as anything else, but we give as an act of our worship to our God. You know, one of the things that God yearns for is to be worshipped. And one of the ways that we worship him is through our giving. So I want to encourage you today to say, look, as you give, whatever offering are you giving it to the king who deserves the type of worship that you are giving him? Is the, is the, is the offering that you are giving to your God commensurate to the worship that you want to give to your God? So saints, as we continue in this same attitude of worship, I want to encourage you that our offering deals are coming up on our screens today. But let us give to our God as our mandate and as our form of worship to him. Let's show our God how, how much we love him, how much we, we want to worship him by giving him our best through our offerings. So our deals are coming up right on our screen. You can give through Zappa. You can give through Snapscan. Uh, or you could uh, make a transfer into our church account, I just want to encourage you that let's continue to worship. And our highest form of worship this morning has to be through our giving. God bless you and thank you for your gifts uh, uh, of giving and your kindness. Now, as we come to the end of the service, I just want to continue to encourage you to stay connected through our various platforms. Whilst we're still in level four lockdown, we are continuing to meet on our Facebook page. We're continuing to meet on our YouTube. And as needed, we meet on our Zoom through our various ministries. 
one more time. Thank you so much, saints, for joining us. And may the, and may the good Lord bless you. Let me say, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keeps me humble down on my